I'm going to talk about the nervous system and the responsibility of the nervous system is to be able to take in, be able to receive stimuli uh, both from the external environment and internal environment, be able to process, integrate, analyze, decide what that stimuli, what it means, um, and then be able to respond to it appropriately. So this chart is showing you how the nervous system is divided. <laughs> and the nervous system can be divided into our central nervous system and our peripheral nervous system. So central nervous system, think centrally located down the axis of our body. And so we have the brain, which is located in the cranial cavity housed by the bones of the cranium. And then we have our spinal cord, which is located in the vertebral canal created by the vertebral foramen of the vertebrae. The brain is like our master computer. It's able to take in all of those stimuli and really um, decide what it means. It stores information as memories, generates uh, emotions. Um, and then our spinal cord, really just when you think of spinal cord, you think of basic reflexes, uh, things that need to be carried out very, very quickly where you don't want the information to have to travel all the way to the brain first before to get analyzed. So spinal cord takes care of very basic reflexes as well as conducts impulses to and from the brain uh, in tracks. The peripheral nervous system is further subdivided into motor neurons and sensory neurons. Motor neurons uh, carry motor information. Sensory neurons carry sensory information. So sensory neurons will be headed carrying information towards or into the central nervous system, into this, the brain or spinal cord. Motor neurons will be carrying information out of the central nervous system to effectors, and those effectors will actually carry out the response, and those effectors will be muscles or glands. Um, <clears throat> now, the motor neurons can further be subdivided into whether they fall under the somatic nervous system or the autonomic nervous system. When you think autonomic, automatic, autonomic, this is involuntary functions, things that you can't control, so digestive glands, uh, smooth muscle, things of, of that nature, so, uh, muscle in your arteries. Um, so the autonomic system is involuntary responses. Now, the autonomic nervous system is further subdivided into whether it's sympathetic or parasympathetic. And sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system, this, you think, fight or flight. And so these are all of the things that would have to happen in a fight or flight situation. So running away or fighting a predator, increased heart rate, increased respiratory rate, um, increased skeletal muscle contractions, um, decreased reproductive uh, function, decreased urinary function, decreased digestive function. And then parasympathetic rest and digest is the exact opposite, right? Increased digestion, increased urinary uh, production, increased reproductive uh, production. So the exact opposite of the sympathetic nervous system. <laughs> the other division of motor neurons would fall under the somatic nervous system, and this controls voluntary movement. So this would all be your skeletal muscle contractions. So nervous tissue, uh, the nervous tissue, there are two basic types of cells found in the nervous tissue. And now nervous tissue, you have these, these neurons, which the neurons are the basic units of function. These are the guys that when you think of the function of the nervous system being able to take in stimuli, receive stimuli, uh, process it, analyze it, decide what it means, and then how to respond appropriately and send the message to the appropriate effector, that's all neurons. Neural glial cells are supportive cells, and so they have a variety of functions, but all are going to support the neurons, which are the basic units of function. Now in nervous tissue, you're also going to find connective tissue, cardiovascular tissue, uh, sorry, uh, vascular tissue um, as well, and we'll see that in a second. <coughs> this picture is showing you two neurons in series, and you already uh, studying muscle 
muscles in your lecture class, you already you shouldn't be familiar with what a synapse is. A synapse is a functional connection between uh, a neuron and an effector or between two neurons. And here it's showing you between two neurons. So this one, which is before the synapse, uh, just to give you some some parts of a neuron, what you're seeing right here that where the nucleus is located, this is the cell body or the soma. The nucleus is inside. These processes coming off of the cell body, these are dendrites, and dendrites are the receiving end. Uh, these are the, um, this is where all of the receptors would be embedded in order to receive the stimulus. The cell body would decide what that information means. And then the information that needs to be carried out would be carried along the length of this long singular process called an axon. And then that information is sent to a, an effector like a muscle or gland or another neuron. Now along this axon, what you see wrapped around, these are all Schwann cells. And Schwann cells are a type of neuroglial cell in the peripheral nervous system only. And the Schwann cells wrap around, but it's not continuous along the entire length. Right? You see individual Schwann cells with space in between. Those spaces are called nodes of Ranvier. Now, these Schwann cells produce a myelin sheath, which a myelin sheath, myelin is a uh, lipid-heavy um, molecule. And so you have layers and layers. It looks like a little Debbie Pinwheel snack. It's wrapped around lots of times. And that myelin sheath is a poor conductor of electricity. And so when an action potential, which is a, um, a bioelectric signal, needs to be sent along the length of the axon to tell the next neuron or tell the effector what to do, it skips because it can't travel where the Schwann cell is. So the bioelectric current will skip from node to node, and that actually speeds up the conduction of the impulse. So an unmyelin, unmyelinated neuron uh, would conduct action potential slower. This, because there are Schwann cells located here, this would be a myelinated axon and it conducts impulse, impulses much, much faster.